Just put a couple nails in there. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> So I'm just going to take a minute here to show you what it is we're doing today. Um, as you can see, I've already had crown in place here, but I had to take it down to, uh, to fix a closet door. I'll show you here in a second. But as you can see here on the left side of this crown, it's cut off flat to the wall. I'll show you how to uh, handle that. And let me show you the rest of it real quick. All right, so here's where that crown ended before. It used to uh, return back to the wall right here, but this header wasn't here above the closet door. I put that in there. We had doors there that went all the way up to the ceiling, and I got rid of those and put this header here so we can accept a standard size door. So I wanted to run the crown across that so that it looks like it's always been there instead of ending right there like it was before. And then we're coming around to this side here to make an outside corner. And then we're going to end it here at the vent by returning it back to the wall, just like I did right here. I'll show you how to make that little return. This is Rudy from the Home Improvement Channel with another video showing you how to fix things around the house. If you're a subscribed member to my community, then welcome back. If you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button below. And if this video was helpful to you, click that like button. It'll help me out a lot. Um, first thing, when you measure that first wall there, you're going to want to put the tape measure all the way to the wall because you're measuring for the 45. You want to know the full length. So put the tape measure just below the crown right there on the drywall and then measure from corner to corner. Of course, that is if your crown is long enough. This crown, or this length here, is 15 feet. So we have 16 feet pieces we're working with. Um, so when we cut that right side, we're gonna cut it as if it's a 45 inside corner. And then I'm gonna show you how to uh, cope that crown. All right, so remember what I said, that the, uh, the piece was exactly 15 feet. I've got my mark here. Now, uh, this is gonna be an inside corner angle, which is gonna start at the bottom here and go this direction, all right? Now, if you were gonna make an outside corner, and I'm gonna show you that here in a few minutes, you're gonna, this is the, say this is the wall at 15 feet, you're gonna go this way, all right? So that makes an outside corner. Now, I'm gonna show you two different ways of uh, cutting this crown on your saw. You can set the table here. It's got a mark for 31.6 right there all right now if you go over here you're gonna have to have one that uh, that angles both ways here see that mark there that's a crown mark at 34 degrees so you can set it that way all right so we're gonna put this in here flat just like this right side you know the normal way and we can cut it at the 15 foot mark all right there we go that's close enough now, what I was saying the other way, we're not done with this yet. I'm going to show you how to cope it. But while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to show you the other way that I usually do is set the uh, saw back to uh, straight up and down here and put it at 45. Now, what you can do here is put the, the saw, or if, you, if your saw doesn't have these markings, you don't need them. If you put the crown end upside down, just the way that it goes on the wall, angle it on the saw. And if you look on the edge here, you wanna make sure that these angles are flat up against the saw fence. All right, so that's the way it goes on the wall. See, that's an outside angle now. And when you cut it, see, it matches up perfectly. That's if you don't have the fancy markings. Remember, the crown's gotta be in there upside down or it won't work. Okay, so remember I said that uh, the other piece on the wall, the first piece I showed you was sitting flat up against the wall. Well, this is never gonna fit unless you cope it. So what you gotta do is you, you've gotta use a coping saw. I can't cope with this anymore. Uh, not that kind of coping. Um, and cut along this white line right here. Now, if I don't get this perfect, I'm sure the critics out there are gonna make fun of me, so oh well. But instead of cutting straight up and down like this, 
like you can do with a piece of base trim. With crown, you gotta cut it way back at an angle like this, or it won't fit when you go to put it out to install it. So make sure you're cutting that along that line and also back. I've tried cutting that straight and it does not fit. One thing to keep in mind, when you're doing an outside corner, you don't have to cope it. So to avoid yourself making 50 trips in and out of the house, if you have a piece of scrap crown, um, you might want to test your work before you, um, there we go, before you take it in the house and then find out it needs more cutting. Uh, remember what I said about cutting it back, so you'll have to do something like this, especially in this area right here. You got to trim that back or it's not going to want to fit. Up here is not quite so bad, but back in here, the way that sits on there when it's on the wall, is it looks like that. So you see how this is going back right here like this, and that's the reason you have to do all that. It seems like more work than it is just a 45 each one of the angles, and it is, but um, this fits better when you put it up on the wall, and it's, it's a little bit more um, forgiving if, if your other pieces aren't quite uh, straight. Now, like I said, when you do an outside corner, you don't have to go through all that. You just cut it and put them together. Okay, so normally um, when you do these corners, I would leave both ends loose. When you start nailing these pieces up, I would nail them towards the middle. Uh, but since this end is already attached from the other piece of crown, I know that the angle is already set right where it needs to be. Uh, so I'm going to start on this end. But when I normally do this uh, from scratch, I normally leave the ends loose so that I can manipulate them around and make them fit right and kind of nail towards the middle. But um, here we go. It's fitting pretty good right there. Got one there. So this crown is kind of big, so I can't nail it way up high or it won't, it won't hit anything. Um, with the smaller crown, you can do that and hit the top plate of the wall usually. But with this bigger crown, you got to nail down low. Or you're going to miss every time. So this is what I mean here by leaving both ends loose. Um, so let's just push this up here any old way and I'll show you how it fits. See, it kind of fits, but you got a big gap at the top right here. So I've marked the wall where I want it to go. But you can play with this until yours fits. So about right there. About right there. Go ahead and nail it on there. Nail it in the corner like I did before. And then just like before, stud finder with the studs. The other end has an outside corner and you're going to want to do the same thing if you have an outside corner is leave those loose on the ends about four feet so you can move it around. I just wanted to show you something on these outside angles. If you set your saw up like I originally showed you with the uh, 31.6 on the um, miter and the 34 degrees on the bevel, um, you're going to have more consistent cuts. The outside corners like this one here are a little bit more dependent on getting that angle right. So I see how I cut it right there. It's already cut and it fits perfectly right there against the blade. So your, your outside corners are gonna look better if you do it this way. If you do it like I was saying you could do, and, the, and, the, and this will work, is put it upside down in the saw and, and cut that way. You might have it a little bit up or a little bit down, and then it's gonna affect this angle right here. So uh, keep that in mind. So anyway, uh, remember I said that uh, that last piece was going to need a return on the end? Well, that's what we got right here. So that's a, a left side of the board, and here's a long piece that's already got an outside angle cut. And that's going to fit just like that. And then we're going to cut this off like this so that we can uh, return it back to the wall. So to get this piece the right length, we're going to cut this off straight right here. So set your saw everything straight. And then see this line right here, if you can see that, where it's cut, you're going to want to cut that square like that.
So just like that. Usually to attach this piece, you can either nail it, you gotta hold it real still to nail it, or you can glue it or something like that. Oh, you <sighs> Oh, And once you get the two pieces um, tied together real nice and tight in the in the corner here, you could add a couple of nails here just to kind of hold it in place in case it works itself loose later. Maybe just one or two more. That should be good. And just caulk that when uh, when you're done. That's a nice tight angle. All right, so I found my glue, got that uh, glued up. Like I said, you don't have to glue that. Um, you can nail that in place, but it is a little bit hard to hold while you're doing that. Usually uh, I use this kind of spackling like this right here to, uh, to fill up the nail holes. It claims it doesn't shrink, but um, it does. But it's better than caulk. You can use caulk too to fill the nail holes if you want to, and that does work good. If that shrinks a little, you can let it dry and apply another coat. Just gonna caulk it real quick. We got this uh, stupid textured ceiling on this job and it does make it uh, a little more difficult to caulk, but it, it does caulk. But when, you, uh, when you're caulking, you usually turn your hand, kind of like point your fingers towards the uh, piece that you're working on. If you turn it the other way like this, you'll smear it up all over the ceiling or the wall. Same thing here, kind of angle your finger towards the uh, crown instead of on the wall. See that? When you're doing these outside corners, there shouldn't be much more than just a little gap there. Barely anything. Just make it as smooth as you can. And when you do the inside corners, I've already done the inside corners, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just smear the caulk in the corners, no big deal. All right, so you get the idea. Uh, that's how I install crown molding. All right, so thanks for watching.